You know, Newfoundland is known for a lot of different things. We are known for hospitality. We are known for great food. We are known for being friendly. One thing that we are known for is our weather. And I'm not talking that it's because our weather is so great. It's, we're known for it because of our weather not being so good. And so there's a saying here in Newfoundland that if you don't like the weather, then just wait. Now, sometimes you might get uh, four seasons in just one day if you wait long enough. Uh, there's a saying that I love that says, whether the weather be cold or whether the weather be hot, we'll weather the weather, whatever the weather, whether we like it or not. Now that's a mouthful right there, but it's true. Newfoundlanders have been known to endure the weather conditions. We don't live here because the weather's so wonderful. You know, our winters are long, they're harsh, they're very cold. Our springs are wet. Uh, our summers are very short. The fall season is beautiful. I just had a friend of mine just recently moved from Nigeria who moved here in the dead of winter. Let me just say it was a huge adjustment for him. So today I wanna to read a story from the Bible and it's in Matthew chapter eight. And it's about weather conditions. We are known uh, for weather conditions here. And so Jesus shares in Matthew 8, verses 23 to 27, it says this, Then Jesus got into, into the boat and started across the lake with his disciples. Suddenly, a fierce storm struck the lake with waves breaking into the boat, but Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went and woke him up, shouting, Lord, save us, we're going to drown. So Jesus responded, Why are you so afraid? You have so little faith. Then he got up and rebuked the wind and waves, and suddenly all was calm. The disciples were amazed. Who is this man, they asked, that even the winds and the waves obey him? See, Newfoundlanders can relate to this because of the storms and the weather, but I think all of us can relate to the story because of storms, because we all face storms in our lives at some point or another. You know, whether that's something in your personal life, whether that's something in your relationship or your finances or health, we all face storms in our lives. And maybe like the disciples, I can kind of sense their frustration with Jesus because they're in a storm. And what was Jesus doing? He was asleep in the boat. I'm sure there's a lot of us today who are watching that you might be going through a storm in your own life. And maybe you're frustrated because you've talked to Jesus and you've prayed and you've reached out to him and it appears as though he's asleep in the boat. You know, as I read this story, there's a couple takeaways that I see from this story. And the first one is this, is that I don't think they were in the boat to be tested. I think they were in the boat to be taught. And what I've noticed is that storms have an incredible way of teaching us things. You know, I face storms in my own life. And things that I've learned through it, things that I've been taught are amazing. I've taught, or sorry, I've learned to, you know, trust in Jesus more. I've learned to put my faith in Him more. I've learned to rely on those around me. Secondly, what I want us to understand today is that there are times where Jesus does calm the storms in our lives, but there are times that He lets the storms rage on and He calms us instead. And neither of them are any less miraculous. So whatever storm that you're facing today, Whatever it is, please remember that in your boat today, Jesus is always with you.